Hello everyone, my name is Akal and I am a somatic therapist as well as an astrological counselor and I also uh, help individuals and couples along their sexual journeys. So what I want to talk about today is Pisces sexual superpower. Uh, you know, just to keep this in context that I always start out these videos kind of negative because that's, this is how it works, right? We move from unconscious to conscious. And as we move, when we're in con unconsciousness, we create uh, chaos, havoc, and conflict, and all sorts of other issues. Uh, and so as we become more conscious, then those issues begin to heal. And eventually, we sort of express our souls much more clearly. So in this, in a lot of ways, will um, I guess our sex lives model this progression in a lot of ways. So Pisces, y'all are a mess. Uh, unconsciously, when you're functioning unconsciously, you are a disaster. Uh, you have tons and tons of creativity, uh, tons and tons of tolerance. I don't know if you can have a lot too much tolerance or too little tolerance anyway. Uh, probably can have too much tolerance, come to think of it. Uh, acceptance. Again, these are all really, really great attributes, but unconsciously, what ends up happening is this. Now, let me go ahead and explain the mechanics here, so to speak, of what Pisces happens with Pisces. So uh, it, it is a mutable water sign. When we talk about water, we talk about emotion. So this idea that there's it's mutable means it's changing, right? So, so you can think about Pisces as being um, like a fountain in a park. And, and it has many holes, and there's like water shooting all over the place out of, this, out of these holes, out of this fountain. So now the issue of Pisces is, is that it, it's so indirect. Like all the energies are all over the place, and it's a mess. And so what ends up happening is, is Pisces energy is, is very etheric and watery, so it, it attempts to sort of like merge and blend with everything in its environment. And which is fine, but the problem is, is oftentimes people in situations in the environment, they don't want to blend with Pisces. I mean, Pisces is an extremely attractive, and I don't mean necessarily physical beauty. I'm talking about attractive sign. It's magnetic. It's kind of like Taurus in a lot of ways, but the magnetism is drawing different things. Um, in the case of Pisces, this magnetism is attempting to draw in um, people through which to uh, empathize with, to connect with, uh, situations, information, uh, a number of things. I mean, so so Pisces polarity is Virgo, and Virgo is mental, right? So it's ruled by Mercury. So Virgo is all about sort of discernment on the material plane in a lot of ways. And, and so Pisces is kind of uh, learning a lot about discernment on the material plane, but it has to access that mental aspect. Because initially it's all ins instinctual emotion, right? It has this desire to experience this, then desire to experience that, and it's it's all over the place. They can't get anything done, right? So it's unfocused. So uh, sexually speaking, what this means is that Pisces, y'all are the biggest cheaters in the zodiac, I would guess. Again, unconscious Pisces, uh, because. The energy wants to merge with everything, right? So and Pisces wants to have all these experiences, right? Because high-minded, very high-minded, all these ideals, etc. So sexually speaking, there's this attempt to merge with everything. The other thing you could see here is, is that, you know, the imagination really takes control here. Neptune is creating all sorts of imagination, all sorts of illusion and delusion, but also spirituality. And I'll get to that in a moment. But the... What ends up happening here is this: that these Neptunian individuals, they will um, get some idea in their head, some sexual, you know, thing they want to play out, and and so they do. And what they may realize is that um, oftentimes fantasy doesn't live up to expectations, and and when fantasy doesn't live up to expectations, what they end up walking away with is potentially a wound. And so Pisces becomes wounded very, very easily. And, and these wounds start to accumulate. Uh, Pisces is incredibly insecure. And let me explain that for a moment. So the insecurity of Pisces does this. 
So think about insecurity in general. So in security, what we attempt to do is we tend to try to control our situation, our environment. So if you're financially insecure, there's you know a, a number of different different ways people might deal with that, but they they attempt to control their finances somehow if you're financially insecure. Or you go get a credit card and you think it's real money. You know, so there's a lot of different ways people end up dealing with it. Either they take the responsible route and they learn to save money and to invest and et cetera, et cetera. Or they do the sort of, uh, that doesn't sound like much fun. So I'm going to go get a new credit card and pretend it's real money and pretend I won't go into debt. And that is the illusion of the, the security as it relates to uh, money. So what ends up happening with Pisces, though, is, is they're attempting to emerge with all these people. They're trying to, attempting to attract all these people in situations. And so they get into situations which cause them a little bit of trauma and discomfort, and their psychic energy becomes so dispersed. And Pisces forgot something, something they understand very deeply, which is we shine from the inside out. Pisces has to learn to lick its wounds, has to learn to withdraw, right? High tide, low tide. At low tide, when the energies are just exhausted, they have to learn to pull inward. Otherwise, y'all become martyrs, self-sacrificing victims. And it doesn't work for you. And I know a lot about our culture these days is, is about recognizing victimhood into, in some ways, we exalt victimhood in order to bring it into um, general human awareness, you know, so, so the victims in our culture are now being exalted. Um, but that's only for purposes of recognition. There is no spiritual growth when you're a victim perpetually. Keep that in mind. So the, uh, the thing I want to say about Pisces is once they realize where their center is, once they understand how to center, they, they gain, um, they gain, I guess, mental focus. So you had all this energy which was dispersed, this water was flowing everywhere. What can, they can then do, do is they can center that water, that stream. And once they are able to center that stream and that water, they can access what was once happening, which is their their solar plexus, their, their center of will and action was all over the place. It was way too open. So then they can then do is they can consolidate their energy, their efforts, their focus, and they can actually move towards a goal, towards some sort of singular point that they've idealized that may exist somewhere off into the future. And usually this goal is going to be related to spiritual matters. Um, and, and sexually, it could be, hey, I don't want to be so indiscriminate sexually. Uh, I don't want to be messing around with everyone. I don't want to continue exploring so many different things sexually. Why don't I focus on one person? And why don't I, find, you know, focus on, uh, you know, how to uplift that one person, how can emerge at that one person, and how to really bring about an elevated, intense experience. So, in other words, kind of uh, the, using sexuality and sexual energy as a technique within the system of tantra. That would be like a good example. So something else that kind of happens with Pisces when they're immature that I forgot to mention is, uh, you know, they're going to seek out structures, structures that give them some sort of security um, because they are so dispersed. So they develop, have kind of, they can be kind of naive, right? So they're going to uh, jump into, let's say, systems. Um, they may study a whole bunch of different things in school, thinking the school is going to provide them structure. They could join a cult, all right? You could join a cult. Um, they can get really become very, very ungrounded and practic impractical in their spiritual practices. Instead of hearing, let's say, the information from an elder about their life path and, and how they learned about money and growth and how to deal with the material plane, they're more interested in the sort of woo-woo channeler person who's, you know, uh, you know, basically tapping into Palladians and and you know. And all this kind of stuff, which is all super interesting, right? But you can't, there's nothing to anchor into. There's, there's no ground there, right? We cannot exist entirely from the ethers. You know, we're here to have a human experience. So you have to find some grounding. So put your Pisces, put your feet on the planet. <laughs> Connect to nature, right? So Pisces, once it becomes 
I would say evolves to its highest point, something very interesting happens. So as I mentioned before, Pisces is kind of passive or aggressive. It's magnetic, it's always drawing in. Um, now the aggressive piece eventually changes from passive aggressive to aggressive aggressive. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is think about Pluto, right? So Pisces soul resonates at the frequency of Pluto. So in a lot of ways, Pisces has on a soul level a lot in common with Scorpios. And this is, this is I, I think, very true. And the thing is, is that what ends up happening with Pluto is because Pluto is the plan of the transformation, right? So transformation, it's not positive, right? Transformation is, it requires two phases, destruction, then rebirth, right? So Scorpio is recognized as the phoenix, you know, the, the bird that rises from the ashes, right, after it's been destroyed. And I'm sure the, the myth is much more complex than that. But generally speaking, that's what it is. So what happens with Pisces as they connect to their soul, this Piscean energy, is they recognize the false structures in our culture, in our society. They can kind of see the bullshit. So what's interesting about this is, so for instance, uh, Pisces stands as you know, the, the world savior, uh, self-sacrifice, all these sorts of things. But none of these things work until Pisces can recognize that we shine from the inside out. They have to know how to center. So if they know how to center, they know how to shine from the inside out, they become destroyers, and they also offer rebirth. And in the case of Pisces, they may not be overly interested in, in you know, let's say Capricorn things, 10th house things, Saturnian things, which are the structures, they may be interested in those things. They can see inherently the flaws in those things, right? So think about media. Think about politicians. They offer us BS, platitudes. They use words like unity and equality and, and, and all this nonsense. But what they're really talking about is conformity and uniformity. Fundamentally two different things. These, these talking heads, they say unity, but what you see is, is rhetoric that comes out of their mouths that ultimately is destructive and divides, right? So divide and conquer. So Pisces can see the pattern. It can see these patterns of division. And so when it sees these patterns of division, it says, ah, it's too much energy to go in and destroy those things directly. That's not what I'm here to do. So Pisces then says, how can I bring in what's universal? What is human that we all share? In that, again, what we all share truly, again, we all may not even have 10 fingers and 10 toes, right? We may not all have two arms even. But what we all do share is the spark of consciousness, the energy which flows through me, flows through you, flows through everything in existence. That is universal. So Pisces is here to bring people to that. And it will destroy the structures which stand in the way of that. Right? So the structures that of indoctrination in our societies, that we've been indoctrinated by our families, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm not saying these things are bad. I'm just saying this is how humanity is growing. And Pisces is here to, to draw humanity into the, the next step. So how they do that is, is, you know, you can see Pisces teaching yoga, meditation, um, doing things to help the help the egos, the personalities, which are the, the illusions that Pisces recognizes that illusion because it lived a life prior to becoming more mature that that was full of illusion, full of like chasing after things that didn't work out. Uh, they may even done a ton of drugs in the process, right? Neptune rules those things. So, Pisces, what they're here to do is they're here to attract and seduce, because that is the role of a teacher, a spiritual teacher, is to attract and to seduce the student, the student who has an open mind, who is willing to learn. And Pisces has to recognize the power here, though, right? So Pisces becomes very powerful, and I, I said earlier, unconscious Pisces is powerful and don't know it. 
they become these people that can alter and control their environments, but they can do it in a negative, manipulative way without really understanding what they're doing. So Pisces, as they become conscious, seduces and attracts, controls their environment in a way to bring about that which is universal. Spirituality, high-mindedness, essentially in, in action is what Pisces becomes. So sexually speaking, um, again, this is, this is, yeah, gosh, you know, it's really interesting. Um, the, the sensei pleasures that Pisces really wants to indulge, uh, because Venus rules this sign. So it is about this sort of sensei pleasures, right? So bringing things from the material world inward to, to experience so that we can kind of merge those things into our being. So those things don't necessarily go away. So sexually speaking, Pisces may be incredibly indulgent. Um, they may apply a lot of high-mindedness high or spiritual concepts to their actions. However, it's never truly exalted if they're stepping on others, if they're hurting others, if they are um, doing irresponsible things sexually. So once they get past all that mess and they start functioning with integrity, Pisces then can really uplift their sexual partners in a, in a magnificent way because Pisces can channel spirit very clearly. It's a malleable ego. It doesn't. So what, what does a malleable ego surrender to? Well, it can surrender to the external world, which they did that when they're immature, or they can surrender to spirit. And that's what Pisces does. Now, spirit wants to, spirit is the highest vibration, is the ultimate vibration. So Pisces wants to lift up their sexual partner's vibrations. Does this mean they're monogamous? Not necessarily. <laughs> um, but they certainly have to be direct with those in their lives who they're having sexual sex with. Be very direct about who you're having sex with why, and, and why you're doing it. Don't lie. Pisces likes to lie. Uh, so no deceptions. Be very direct. Be honest. And and if you're doing this and you have other people's consent and agreement, you will uplift them. The energy which you carry will uplift those you come into connection with because your aura, your energy merges with others. And it can do this consciously or unconsciously. So Pisces, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.